Today we talk about Hanoi Shilling papera HSP, or some may call it IgA vasculitis. So before we start, if you forget everything from this video, do remember these four pictures: um, some rashes over bilateral lower limbs, joint pain, very painful tummy of your kids, and kidney. So these four involvement are the most important involvement of HSP. So we will talk it one by one. Let's go. So first of all, what is HSP? It is actually a small vessels vasculitis, which means the inflammation of your blood vessels. We have different kind of size of uh, vasculitis. Firstly, we have large vessels vasculitis. We call it Takayasu arteritis. We have medium size of vasculitis, like Kawasaki disease. And then we have for the small vessels, uh, when they have the vasculitis, we have IgA vasculitis, and uh, or we call it HSP. So HSP is the small vessels inflammation of the blood vessels. So 90% of the cases are in pediatric age. Most of them are children. We do have adult cases, but most of them are children. The incidence is around 3 to 27 per 100,000. The pathophysiology of HSP. So it is actually an immune process. It can be triggered by infection. After a branch of immune process, eventually the body forms some IgA immune complex inside the small vessels and lead to inflammation of this kind of small blood vessels and then lead to vasculitis. We have different organ presentation in HSP. It is because it involves uh, the blood vessels inside different organs. So the kidney involvement is mainly due to the immune complex uh, inside mesangial cells of the of your kidney, and therefore um, it can lead to nephritis or proteinuria. So, for skin involvement, it is actually one hundred percent of patients have this, and it is essentially for diagnosis. Um, so the most classical one you can see is this kind of petechial or palpable pepper over bilateral lower limbs. Around 75% of patients has this at, as the first sign. It usually begins with some erythematous or macular or, or reticaria-like rashes first. Eventually, they evolve into classical petechiae and palpable pepper. Usually, it's symmetrical. You can see in this picture of both lower limbs having the um, and this is typically over the extensive surface of the lower limbs. Sometimes it can also affect the buttocks or even upper limbs. And rarely it can spread to the trunk, your face, uh, or have some bullous lesions. So whenever you see patients with bilateral petechiae or papilla, do think about HSP. And do remember they are non-branchable. They are non-branchable. So the second presentation is arthritis. 80% of patients have that. It's usually oligoarthritis. It's just a uh, affect one or just uh, very few joints. The common joints will be the lower limb joints, uh, like hip, knee, or the ankles, and less common over the upper limbs. So um, some young children, they may not be able to tell you, uh, I have the pain, but then they represent with, they refuse to walk. So whenever you see patients with those particular rashes over the lower limbs and then they kind of refuse to walk or they feel painful, do remember HSP. And luckily, this arthritis does not cause deformity or any secretly. So the GI involvement, around 50% of patients have the GI involvement. And this is quite tricky because the GI involvement can happen before the rashes in around 50% of the cases. And actually, it can lead to difficulty in diagnosis. So if you have a patient with abdominal pain uh, for a few days, and then suddenly they have bilateral lower limbs petechiae, do think about HSP. And the most common and the most important complication of GI involvement is the intersubception. So the patient may feel painful over the tummy, and then they can have some PR bleeding. Like, um, And the most classical um, description will be like this, the recurrent jelly-like stool. Um, it is very important because uh, it needs to, we need to consult surgeon about that. Other presentation include like nausea, the GI bleeding, just abdominal pain, 
or more severe bowel perforation. Rarely, uh, patients can present with acute pancreatitis or gallbladder involvement. For the kidney presentation, we call it HSP nephritis or IgA V nephritis. It happens in around 20 to 50% of patients. Interestingly, it must present after the rashes and it can have delayed presentation. Around 90% of the cases happen within two months after the rash and 97% of patients happens uh, with the kidney involvement happen within six months after the rash present. And therefore, whenever we have a patient diagnosed with HSP, we do need to follow up the patients for at least six months because we need to monitor the blood pressure, we need to monitor the urine multistics to look for any kidney involvement. And we need to follow up every patient because the kidney involvement can have delayed presentation. And some people may suggest that is it the same with IgA nephropathy because both of them involve the IgA immune complex, but is this actually different? From many studies, IgA nephropathy is more like a chronic process with repeated attack to the kidney. HSPN usually is more acute one. They're different. So the most common presentation of kidney involvement uh, is hematuria or some mild proteinuria. So you can uh, detect some red blood cell or uh, some small amount of uh, protein inside the urine multistics. But it can also happen in more severe way, like nephrotic syndrome uh, with nephrotic range of proteinuria, more than 2 mg per mg with the spot protein creatinine ratio. Edema like uh, puffy eyes or scrotal edema, lower limbs edema, hypoalbuminemia. It can also happen in the way of nephritic syndrome with hematuria, raised blood pressure, decreased urine output, and raised creatinine. It can also involve other organs like um, urological organs. Uh, patients can have scrotal pain or testicular pain mimicking testicular torsion. They can also have CNS involvement, like they can present with headache, seizure, or encephalopathy. These are more rare uh, presentation. So for differential diagnosis, it depends on what kind of presentation you see. If you see papera or particular, one of the most important thing we need to think about is medical cosmia because it's life-threatening. Uh, when you see non-branchable papera, uh, first thing you need to think about medical cosmia, especially patients having a fever. Thrombocytopenia, like causes like um, ITP, or if the history is suspicious, we need to think about non-accidental injury, some coagulopathy like uh, hemophilia. For abdominal pain, the differential diagnosis like surgical abdomen, like intersubsection, valvulus, appendicitis, or it can also be gastroenteritis. Arthritis, we think about septic arthritis if the patient has fever, reactive arthritis, or some autoimmune causes like um, juvenile idiopathic arthritis if it lasts for longer. So how do we diagnose of HSP? It is actually a clinical diagnosis, um, and by the HSP EULA guideline in the 2008, the classification state that uh, we must have the palpable papilla or particular over the lower limbs, and this is the most important signs. And plus one of the followings, abdominal pain, joint pain, or renal involvement. So these are the four most important things when it comes to diagnose um, HSP and also uh, histopathology. Sometimes we do skin biopsy or renal biopsy. For investigation, we take the blood, we take the CBC, uh, we take a look at the platelet to rule from cytopenia of the particular. We take a look at the renal function test to look at the any raised creatinine, clotting profiles to rule coagulopathy, uh, plus or minus blood culture when you if you're suspecting medical cosemia. We can also take some inflammation markers, like CRP, ESR. We can also take the IgA level. It can be raised in HSP. Also, um, if we're suspecting other kinds of vasculitis, like other autoimmune causes, we can also take some auto, uh, other autoimmune markers. It's they're usually negative in HSP. And of course, for the renal involvement, we need to uh, screen for uh, the multistix to look for wrappers and protein. If we have protein urea, we do the urine protein creatinine ratio. And if the patient have any GI involvement like abdominal pain or PR bleed, we do the imaging like X-ray, ultrasound abdomen or CT abdomen, 
plus pelvis to look for any um, signs of intersubception or bowel perforation. For renal biopsy, we do not need to do it for every cases. Um, usually we do it for persistent proteinuria. Uh, it depends on how much protein you have. There are some urgent indications like nephritic or nephrotic syndrome or raised creatinine. They are the urgent indications for renal biopsy. For management, for the skin involvement, we go for conservative management because usually the rashes will go away within weeks, but then it can recur and it can come back. We need to counsel parents about that. For the joint involvement, pain control will be the mainstay. We can give paracetamol. For more severe cases, we can also give NSAID like ibuprofen. And for severe cases, we can also give oral pregnisolone. Usually we give two weeks and then wean over the next two weeks. For GI involvement, again, it's very important to exclude intersubception if the patient having any PR bleed or severe abdominal pain. We do imaging to exclude that. And after excluding all this, if still have significant abdominal pain, we can consider to use oral pregnisolone for that. Of course, if we suspect any surgical causes or um, intersubception, we do need to consult the pediatric surgeon. For the kidney involvement, if the patient do not have any kind of renal presentation, we do need to follow up at least six months for blood pressure and the urine multistex. And steroid cannot prevent HSP nephritis. And for minimal proteinuria, we need to have the close monitoring of the BP and urine multistack uh, in a regular interval. And if the patient has persistent proteinuria, uh, we need to consider for renal biopsy and consult the nephrologist. And of course, if the patient has severe presentation like nephritic, nephrotic syndrome, or impaired renal function, we do consult the nephrologist, and then they may need uh, renal biopsy. And for the choice of the medication, with these kind of cases, actually from different guidelines, they have different recommendations. So now still no very concrete evidence on what is the best approach. But generally, um, we can choose to use ACEI to decrease the proteinuria, the steroid and immunosuppressants. For prognosis, one third of HSP has the recurrence. They can come back, especially the rashes. And the rashes phase within weeks. Arthritis usually does not have any secretly. And the renal involvement for those with transient hematuria and proteinuria, 80% of them resolve within several months. And if those uh, who did the renal biopsy, the histology can actually add as the kidney prognosis predictor. So that's all for the HSP presentation. And thank you for watching till the end. If you would like to have more this kind of content or sharing over different kind of medical topics, do remember to click the subscription button and I will share with you again next time. Thank you.